Well, what's up, everybody? We are so glad to be with you this year at Tragedy Into Triumph. So thankful to be able to worship with you tonight, to hear some amazing stories about our God with you tonight. Well, I'm Zach Carpenter, and this is Abby Brown. And Hi, we are, everybody. <laughs> we are so glad to be with you guys tonight. Hey, whether you are in a living room or maybe you're, you're watching it, you know, at a friend's house and, you know, and like they got a movie room or you're watching it at church, why don't you all just right now make some noise? Man, the people right here, we're going to make some noise right now. Band, you want to make some noise right now? Let's, let's make a little noise. We are excited to join with you because in this crazy year, the thing that I've been reminded of the most is no matter the circumstances in our lives, our God is still the great connector. Our God is still the great healer. Our God is still the one redeeming and restoring and renewing us. And I'm telling you right now, no matter where you are, and you and I will probably never get to meet, He is doing that in and for and through you right now. Right now. And so tonight, or today, whenever you're getting to meet, we just want you to know that God is for you. That if you feel like you're in a tragic situation or there has been tragedy in your life, our God has triumphed for you. Our God has victory for you. And we want you guys to hear that, to receive that, and to say, okay, God, I don't know how I'm gonna move forward, but I trust you. So tonight, tonight, as you hear some great music from this band behind me, as you hear a wonderful story, we want you guys more than anything to hear from and connect with the God of the universe, the one that created you and me. So one of the things that we've done is we've tried to make some resources available to you because moments are great, but God didn't just make us for moments. He made, he made us for this life to live where it continues on. And so we have a great resource for you. And right at the bottom of your screen, you'll see there, tragedyintotriumph.com. Please go to that website, tragedyintotriumph.com. You'll, you'll see some links right there across the top of the website as soon as you get on there. One of the things you'll see is contact us. Man, we would love to hear from you guys, to hear about what God is doing in your life. If you have questions, man, you can use that. You can use the FAQ link. But then also, you'll see something new. There's a couple of new things on there. And uh, Abby, why don't you tell us about some of that? Yeah, definitely. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Abigail Brown. And what I want you to do is take out your phones right now. Go to, yeah, right now, Pastor Zach. All right, go to tragedyintotriumph.com. Scroll down to the bottom. There you will see our social media feed. We have Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So please follow us because guess what? You have a story, and we want to be a part of that story. That's right. Man, we do want to be a part of that story because with God, we are all connected. We are in this together. And man, when we do this together, it's amazing what else God can do in and through us. So get on there and uh, follow us on those social links. Again, go to the website, tragedyintotriumph.com. Connect with us, contact us. Something else we want to, uh, to throw out there is, man, this is an amazing ministry. This is an amazing ministry of people who give lots of time to make this happen. And you'll see a link up there that says event donations. And, and sometimes it feels weird talking about money, doesn't it, Abby? Because you just, we don't want to offend anybody, we want to hurt anybody, because we are not going to charge people to hear the gospel. So we're asking for people who do believe in what's happening, who do believe in tragedy and to triumph, who are saying, God, I want this to keep happening. Would you please click that link and just give as you feel God leading you to give. We're not putting an amount on there. We're just saying, hey, we're teaming up together with you to keep telling those stories. So please click that link tonight. Then one other thing that we're all excited about, right? About people sharing their stories. You'll see a link up there at the top that says three simple words share your story. The reason why that's such a big deal is because part of the website that we'll launch later this year is going to be a spot for you to jump on to tragedyintotriumph.com and you can type in the word addiction. You can type in the word abuse. You can type in the word loss. You can type in the word grief. And because people like you have already clicked that share your story button, People like you have recorded those stories on their laptops or their phones and, and have told us, have told each other about how God has worked in their life, how God has worked in your life. But for that to happen, we need you guys to click that link like right now. Maybe if you don't get to it till later, but click that link so you've got it ready. Just like Abby said, man, get out those phones, 
click that link and there'll be instructions for you to record your video on there so that other people can hear about what God is doing in and through you. Again, that's tragedyintotriumph.com. We want to get connected with you. So stand up right now. Let's worship together. We have an amazing band worshiping with us. We have Josh, we have Josh Brown and Darrell Comedy. So stand up to your feet and worship with us. Wherever you are right now, as Abby said, stand to your feet and let's pray and let's ask God to do something amazing in our time together. God, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to join together all across the country and honestly around the world. You are the great connector. You created us for community. So tonight we come together in that common unity and say, all right, God, I'm here. I'm here. Would you speak? Would you move? God, do something in my life. I need you. All of us are at different spots in the journey. Maybe you're thinking right now, I'm not sure how I feel about this whole God thing. Why don't, why don't you just pause right now? God, help that person to pause and to just hear you tonight, to hear what you have to say, what you have to share, because great things are in store. God, move tonight. Move in this time. Move in our worship. Move as we hear another amazing story about what you've done and what you are doing right now. God, we love you, we thank you, and we are excited to worship you together. And no matter where you are, in a living room, in somebody's house, at a church, everybody say amen together. Let's say that. Amen. 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 Let's worship.
Oh 
There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. If you believe that, sing with me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming at me.
be broken You surrendered it all for me And the cross didn't stop you And the grave couldn't keep you And now I'm alive and for
become a seal now because I wanted to kill. I felt evil just enter me. I wasn't thinking about the effect I would have on anybody else. I just thought of the immediate escape now. I wanted to take my life. Being as miserable as I was, but I'm a Navy SEAL now, I decided, you know what, there's nothing left. I'm just going to drink, go out, get in fight. I wanted everybody to tell me that I was beautiful, yet that was one of the most insecure nights of my life. What do you have to lose by giving God a chance to see what He has planned for you? And right there that night, I repented of my sin and put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. What an awesome God we serve. Got a feeling that's going to be a rescue story tonight. If you believe that that's going to be a rescue story, put your hands together and give Jesus a big thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Here's a rescue story that we're about to hear. You know, the scripture speaks in Proverbs 31 and verse 30. It says, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. We got an opportunity tonight to listen to this voice, a woman that has reverence, fear of God. So put your hands together, give a warm welcome to Kylie Bassetti. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, thank you guys so much for having me out. Um, I'm so excited to be speaking at Tragedy into Triumph, and um, I'm just so blessed to be able to share my heart with you, my story with you, and really just uh, my testimony of how God took me from living a life of darkness um, to now living for the light. And um, I just want to thank the worship team. Oh my goodness, that was so amazing, um, just being able to worship and praise the Lord like that. Um, it was incredible. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. And um, I just want to say a quick prayer for everyone who is um, listening right now. Um, if we can just pray uh, to the Lord. Um, Father God, I just come to you. Um, I just pray that you are glorified tonight, um, that all glory goes to you, Lord Jesus. Uh, I pray that you speak through me um, to share and that you touch the lives of everyone who is listening, that they can see um, the hope that comes from you, Lord, you alone, um, how you change hearts, change lives. I pray that uh, all who are, who are watching tonight and hearing um, really the testimony of what you have done in my life, um, not what I've done, but all because of you, um, that there will be hearts changed, um, that people will know your love. Lord, I, I pray these things in your name, Jesus. Uh, amen. Um, so I just want to share my heart with you guys. Um, my story kind of starts back when I was uh, a little girl. Um, I'm sure many girls can relate um, to the pressures of this world, you know. Um, everywhere we look, I feel like it's even worse now than when I was a little girl. Um, because back then, there weren't all, all of these... Um, uh, social media platforms, you know, where we're constantly seeing uh, all these filtered faces, all of these ads um, all day long, you know, 
girls are scrolling all day long and, and this is what they're bombarded with. Um, when I was a little girl, it was mostly just um, different ads, um, billboards, you know, some fashion magazines and some reality TV shows. And I felt such immense pressure back then um, that I had to look a certain way to have value in this world, um, that I had to act a certain way or dress a certain way um, to have value in this world. So when I was a little girl, um, I grew up in Idaho and Nevada. Um, I was born in, in Idaho and grew up in Nevada. And um, my dad spent a lot of time with me as a little girl. Um, I grew up knowing my daddy's love um, when I was really young. And um, when I was about eight, we ended up moving to Las Vegas. And when we moved there, um, you know, everything was more expensive, homes were more luxurious. The small town that I came from, um, I lived in a little trailer, and the town had maybe a couple thousand people. Um, the school was a K through 12 school. And when we moved to Las Vegas, everything was bigger, more grand. Um, the school I went to there was about 2,000 people. So it was a huge change um, for me and for my family. And uh, my dad had to start working more to provide um, our, life, our lifestyle there. And so I went from seeing my dad all the time and you know getting all of that attention that a little girl wants and looks for um, and that love, um, I started to see that diminish and um, wither away as my dad uh, took more time to work and spent less time um, with me, his little girl. And um, you know, little girls, they, they just want to be loved. Um, everybody here, we all just, we really want to be loved. Um, but little girls look to their daddy, you know, to, to get that love if they're not getting it from Christ. And I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I didn't grow up going to church. So I definitely wasn't looking to God for that love. I was looking to my dad. And so as that withered away, um, I started looking in other places. Uh, I started looking for it anywhere that I could get attention. And that pretty much came from guys at school, um, guys at the mall, guys everywhere, really. I just wanted um, to get attention because when guys would give me attention, I felt like I had value. I felt um, special. I felt like I was loved. And so from a very young age, um, uh, people would tell me that I should become a model. I had long legs and I was really, really thin. Um, so thin that the kids at school made fun of me and called me anorexic um, and bulimic. So, you know, people just saw my body type and immediately thought she should be a model. And so um, I liked getting that attention when I was young. And I started dressing um, in provocative ways to try and get that attention. Uh, I started wearing short skirts. Um, I started acting in different ways at school uh, to try and fit in um, because I got bullied in school and called anorexic and bulimic. Um, it made me want to fit in that much more. And I started doing things um, that I wouldn't normally do, it definitely things that I knew was wrong um, in hopes that I would fit in and just feel like I was loved. And so um, that all started in middle school and it just got worse by high school. Um, by high school, I didn't see my dad that often. He was working um, all the time. Uh, I felt like work was really his love. Um, it wasn't me. And um, I still didn't know the Lord at that point, so I wasn't looking to him. Um, I ended up getting my first boyfriend when I got into high school. And um, of course, he was the first boy that told me he loved me. And um, that's what I had been searching for all this time. And um, of course, it was a lie. <laughs> uh, so I thought I had found what my heart was seeking after. 
Um, and he gave me lots of attention. He told me everything that I wanted to hear, you know, just like you see in the movies. Um, and my parents had always told me that guys only want one thing from me, um, but I didn't believe them. I thought that this was different. Um, he was really feeding all that I was seeking for in my heart. And so at the young age of 15, I ended up losing my virginity to this guy. And shortly after that, he left me. Um, he didn't love me. Uh, I was miserable. Um, at that point, I just felt like I was so not worthy to be loved. Um, not only did the one person that I thought truly loved me end up deserting me, um, I had done the one thing that my parents my whole life had told me not to do. Um, my whole life, they, even though we didn't come from a Christian home, um, they told me that I should save myself for marriage. And clearly, I went against their wishes, um, and I lost my virginity. And so I hated myself. Um, from that time forward, I just couldn't forgive myself for what I had done. Um, I felt like an outcast. I felt hopeless. Um, at that time, my younger brother, who was only a few years old, um, threw a penny in a wishing well, wishing that his sister would smile again. Um, that's how evident my sorrow and sadness and hopelessness was. Um, it was so evident that kids at school um, saw how depressed I was, and someone reached out to me and invited me um, to a small group. And so I decided to go, by God's grace, um, to this small group, and um, the people there were just different. Uh, I felt like they accepted me. Um, I felt good when I was there. Um, they weren't making fun of me. And so I continued to go. And um, I ended up attending a camp with this Christian small group for teens. And um, at this camp, they told us to take out a piece of, well, we got a piece of wood, and they told us to write on it the one thing in our lives that we just can't forgive ourselves for. And I hadn't shared what I had done with anybody at that point. The only person that knew what I had done was the guy. Um, and so I wrote losing my virginity on this piece of wood. And they said, now toss it into the bonfire. And so I tossed it in. And they talked about how... Um, our greatest sins, the things that we feel we cannot even forgive ourselves for, um, God forgives those sins. And it's like seeing them go up in flames in the bonfire, just disappearing. That's how he forgives our sins. And uh, I, was, I was changed. Um, God came into my heart that night and showed me his forgiveness, showed me that Regardless of what I had done, um, he loved me, and he didn't think that I was worthless. And um, that was the night that I accepted the Lord and Savior into my heart and knew that I wanted to live for him. Um, but my story um, continued on from there because even though I accepted the Lord and Savior into my life. I knew of his forgiveness, his amazing love, his grace, his mercy. Um, I still continued seeking out worldly things from that point. Um, I didn't make him the God of my life. I still sought after my idols, um, the idols that I was seeking after as a little girl. And so um, I ended up continuing to go to church, um, but I also sought after becoming a model. Um, I was still seeking for that attention, that fame, that acceptance. Um, I thought God gave me long legs for a reason, and um, that was to become a supermodel. So um, in high school, I ended up 
getting signed by an agency in Las Vegas, and um, they had me go out to New York. Um, and at the age of 14, I had went to Japan and Thailand and um, did different things like that for the modeling world. And it was the first time that the kids at school uh, actually started praising me and stopped making fun of me for being so skinny. And I kind of felt like I fit in a little bit. Um, and so I traveled to all these places. And at the age of 16, I ended up moving to New York City um, to model full time. So I left school and um, moved to New York. And when I was a little girl, you know, I would watch shows like America's Next Top Model. Um, I don't even know if they have that anymore, but I'm sure they have some other reality TV show that's similar. And I would just see these girls, um, you know, constantly being told how beautiful they are. Um, I would look at models like Heidi Klum and Giselle, who by the world, you know, they're considered beautiful. They're considered worthy of praise. They're considered valuable. And I saw these women and I wanted that. I wanted that for myself. And so when I got to New York, I quickly realized that it was nothing like um, I saw on these reality TV shows. Um, it was full of drugs, alcohol, eating disorders, um, you name it. And I was 16 at the time and there were girls younger than me who were living there full time. And, um, you know, girls were being taken out to different nightclubs um, by club promoters because they were models and it got more people into the clubs. Um, girls were given drugs, so I was exposed to drugs and alcohol at a pretty young age. Um, and I really was just wanting to do whatever it took to get to the top of the modeling industry. Um, the eating disorders that I was exposed to was just insane. So I went from being bullied in school and called um, bulimic and anorexic to New York where I was a model and my agency was telling me that I was a fat pig and a cow um, and that I actually needed to lose weight in order to go on these castings that they wanted to send me on. So I was five foot ten and about 120 pounds and they wanted me to lose inches off my hips and waist and thighs and I ended up getting down to a very unhealthy weight of 110 pounds um, to try and make it in this modeling world and it was so distorted, um, so full of destruction Girls would get surgeries to shave their hip bones down to be thinner. Um, I've known models who have lost babies because they couldn't support the baby because of their eating disorders. Uh, models who would just eat cotton balls to feel full um, but not actually consume calories. And all of these young girls were just trying to find value and hope and make it in this industry. Um, so that we could become like Heidi Klum and Giselle. Um, so I continued on. I did what they told me. I lost the weight. Um, I made so many compromises. Uh, by the age of 17, I had already posed topless um, because that's what they told me I needed to do. And I wasn't reading my Bible as much anymore. I wasn't really attending church as much anymore. Um, I was just living for myself. I knew of God's forgiveness. I knew that he loved me, but I loved myself more than I loved him. And so I continued down this road. Um, I continued doing these things, making these compromises um, in hopes that I would make it big in this modeling world um, so that I could become famous and successful. And I feel like in our society today, so many young girls and young guys, so many people are seeking after that fame, that success, that glory for ourselves. And that's exactly where I was. And I was headed down a path of destruction. Um, it was not a good path I was on. It was full of darkness. And I continued down that path seeking after my idol, which was attention and glory for myself. 
And so I just kept thinking, um, if only I could become a Victoria's Secret model because that's the top of the industry, then I would be happy because I wasn't happy um, being told I need, needed to lose weight over and over. Um, I didn't feel like the beautiful models that we see um, in magazines. And so I just thought if I could only become a Victoria's Secret model, um, that would fulfill all of that longing in my heart. And so by the age of 19, uh, I believe that the Lord handed me over to those worldly desires um, so that he could show me that there's no hope in that. Hope lies in him alone. And so at the age of 19, um, I ended up becoming the next Victoria's Secret runway angel. And um, I had joined a competition, kind of like America's Next Top Model, um, where people voted for the girl that was gonna be the next runway angel. And um, I ended up winning that entire competition. And um, you guys, I had my supposed dreams come true that night. Um, that night, I was able to walk on the runway with these other models that I had looked up to my whole life. Heidi Klum was the model that announced that I was the winner. Um, and that was supposed to be, by the world's standards, the biggest night of my life. The night where all my dreams, everything I had worked hard for in the modeling industry um, had finally come true. Um, you know, I was the most Googled person um, in the world that night. And I just wanna tell you guys, that was one of the most hopeless, insecure, miserable nights of my life. Um, <laughs> what was supposed to be the greatest night was truly just the most insecure night of my life. And that's because there's no hope in these worldly things, you guys. Everything was just so fake at the top of the industry. Um, these models that I have had seen all my life um, who are considered the world's most beautiful women, um, they were drinking backstage, you know, dancing on tables, different things like that. Um, even if they were married, flirting with other guys. Um, we had to arrive very early at about eight in the morning, um, but the show didn't take place till much later that night and all those hours were spent putting makeup and hair and spray tan and airbrushing to airbrush away any blemishes or cellulite or scars um, on the model's bodies hours and hours and hours into perfecting these girls into the image that the people see when they watch the runway show. So it was just all so fake. And um, it was so much pressure because from that night forward when I was seen by um, all of the people who watched me walk the runway, I felt like I had this pressure to uphold that image, to look like that. And I know I don't look like that, um, you know, in real life uh, without hours and hours of this fake hair and makeup and spray tan. And it's just impossible. That standard of beauty is impossible for us girls and women to live up to. We just cannot do it. And so from that night forward, I had such pressure and I was so insecure. Um, but the world saw me as happy, as beautiful, as successful. Um, I was attending red carpet events. I was being compared to Kim Kardashian for who wore it better in tabloids. Um, it was all the things that as a little girl I had dreamed of. Um, but in my heart, I was just miserable and aching. Um, I had my younger cousin, who was, I believe, eight at the time, who told me that she wanted to stop eating her food so that she could feel beautiful like me because I was thin and pretty. And that just broke my heart. You guys, I realized that she wasn't the only little girl feeling that way, looking at me, 
somebody that the world considered beautiful, knowing that I was miserable in my heart, I wasn't happy, I didn't feel beautiful, <sighs> knowing that she was not the only little girl out there like that, the path that I was on was causing other little girls to acquire eating disorders, um, causing them to see themselves as this image that they had to become like me in order to be beautiful in this world, that they had to take off their clothes to get the attention that I was getting, that they had to fit this mold, a certain body type, in order to feel valuable. Um, not only that, but men were falling into pornography from the things um, that I was doing, the way that I was posting um, these pictures, you know, the magazines that I was in. Um, I was doing different photo shoots where I was wearing lingerie and different things like that. Um, and I was married at the time. So not only was this destructive for my own heart and my walk with Christ, but this was destructive for my marriage as well. And um, you guys, I, I'm just so thankful for how much God has changed my heart because um, in this time of seeking out attention for myself, I was also seeking out attention still from other men. So this pattern of seeking attention from the time that I was a child continued on even though I was married. And so God started showing me what that was doing to my marriage. He started showing me how it was disrespectful to my husband, um, how it was breaking my husband's heart, um, the way that I was pos uh, posing in these magazines and the attention I was seeking from other men, flirting with other men. Um, God started opening my eyes to these things and the destruction and darkness that was in my life at that time. Um, there was a specific photo shoot that I ended up doing for a men's magazine um, because being a lingerie model, a lot of the photo shoots were for men's magazines. And um, I was at this photo shoot and um, I was already wearing lingerie, but the photographer was pressuring me to even take that off. And I told him no. I told him that I wasn't comfortable doing it, um, that I didn't want to do it. And he kept pressuring me. Um, and then he ended up storming out of the room and yelling at me. Um, then what are you even here for? This is your job. This is what you're supposed to do. And that's when it hit me, what am I there for? Why am I doing this? Um, but I was still pressured enough to do what he wanted. And um, I was just so convicted that night, you guys. Um, God was just tugging on my heart. Um, when I drove home to my husband that night, I just went to him in tears, confessing what I had done. Um, knowing how much it would break his heart. And that was the night that God used um, to really open my eyes to what I was doing in my marriage, how I was chasing after my idols, um, how I was seeking out all of these worldly things, and how it was causing destruction in his life, my life, the lives of all the girls watching me, um, men's lives by them seeing these images and getting into pornography and different things like that. That night, I got on my knees and um, I begged God to change my heart. I begged him to show me what I needed to do. I repented of all that I had been doing. Um, I asked for his forgiveness. And I was just crying on my knees that night as God showed me that I needed to leave this industry and leave this world behind. And so that night I decided that I needed to stop modeling in this provocative way, um, that I needed to start changing these things that I was doing. Um, and that night I decided that I wanted to live for him and not for myself. 
I wanted to live for his glory and not my own glory. And so I ended up walking away from the modeling industry um, as a whole. And uh, many people were surprised at that decision. Um, shocked, really, because who leaves all of that money and fame and glory and all of those things? But you guys, I finally had peace in my heart. Um, when I share about how insecure and hopeless I was the night of the Victoria's Secret runway show, I, that was gone. I had peace for once in my heart about what I was doing. And it's because I was living for God. I wasn't living for myself. I wasn't living for the world. Um, I was living for him. And uh, you guys, he gave me su such hope, um, a hope that can only come from him. It can't come from the things of this world. Um, it can't come from our success, uh, our looks, or how much glory and praise we get from this world, the people of this world. Um, I found hope that can only come from him, and my life completely changed. Um, my marriage got so much better um, from that point. I stopped seeking out attention from other men and disrespecting my husband in that way. Um, I started sharing with young girls about body image issue and um, eating disorders and how you can find hope in Christ to overcome these things. Um, I started focusing on my heart versus my outer appearance. Um, when I was in the modeling world, I was so focused on my outer appearance and what I look like and trying to fit this mold. I know that is such a huge huge burden on girls' hearts right now. Um, guys' hearts, too. Uh, eating disorders aren't just for women now. So many men struggle as well with eating disorders and with comparison as we're scrolling through our social media feeds and seeing all of these Instagram perfect pictures, um, these lives that just look so perfect from the outside. You guys, we all struggle with these things. And so when I stopped focusing on all of that, I started focusing on my heart. Um, I started reading my Bible. I started looking to Christ for um, my glory, my beauty. It all comes from him, knowing that he is the one who made me. He sees me as beautiful. It's not how the world sees me. It's not how the people of this world see me. It's about how he sees me. And I know by reading scripture that he sees me as beautiful and worthy. And you guys, that just changed everything for me, um, knowing that my worth and my value come from him alone. Um, I just want to encourage all the girls out there um, that are listening. Um, you are not defined by this world. This world does not define you. God defines you. And he already sees you as perfect, as beautiful, as worthy, as lovely. He sees you as so worthy that he gave his life for you that he bought you with a price. He's forgiven you, he's redeemed you, and you are so worthy, so lovely, so beautiful. I just hope that we all can stop looking to this world to find our identity, because it's an identity in him that truly brings hope and peace and joy and um, I found that identity in him. You guys, I went from a life of darkness, a life of shame, a life where I couldn't even forgive myself for things that I had done, um, a life of not honoring my husband, um, not honoring our marriage, not bringing glory to God by the things that I was doing, um, to a life where I live for him. Um, when I was on the runway in front of thousands of people, it was all about myself. It was all to bring glory for myself. 
um, now when I'm sharing my testimony and sharing what he has done in my life because it's not about what I have done at all. Making the decision to leave the modeling world to live for him, it's not something that I could have done, only something that he did through me. Um, it's all about his glory. It's all for him, you guys. Um, I came from a life where it was all about me um, to now wanting to live my life for him and share that amazing hope that can only be found in him alone. And uh, I went from believing in abortion, um, you know, the killing of innocent babies, um, to now sa savoring life, loving life. I have four um, children. I never wanted kids before, but God completely changed my heart and gave me four um, beautiful little babies. Um, he has totally saved my marriage. I often think what my life would look like if I continued down that path of darkness, um, that path of destruction, and what my marriage would look like. And I only see hopelessness. I only see an insecure woman who is still searching, still seeking out that hope, still trying to find her identity um, in these worldly things. And now I stand here before you as a woman of God, a woman who loves life, who has joy because of Christ and what he's done, um, who is thankful and grateful to him because I know that I can only be standing here today because of him who changed my heart, because of him who brought me out of that darkness, out of that destruction, to be able to share with everyone this amazing hope that can only be found in him. You guys, he loves you. He bought you with a price. He's forgiven every sin that you have ever committed and every sin that you will commit. That's how much he loves you. Um, I just hope, I hope, I pray that you will see how much he loves you, um, that he bought you with a price. I am a completely changed person because of him. Um, I, I'm just so grateful to all that he has done um, in my heart and in my life. And um, I encourage you all to jump on the Tragedy into Triumph website and share your story because you guys, really sharing our story is about sharing a testimony of Christ. It's about sharing what he's done in our lives. Um, and it's all about him, you guys. Uh, giving glory to him for what he's done, how he's brought you hope, how he's given you um, hope in this life. So I encourage you, jump on there, share your story. Um, I'm so grateful that I was able to share mine with you all. And I pray that God will use it um, in your life to bring hope in him alone. Man, thank you so much, Kylie. What, wasn't that an amazing story? An amazing story. Thank you so much for being willing to share that. Thank you. Uh, it's amazing how God changes us, isn't it? Just absolutely amazing what he does in our lives. So thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> So here's the, here's the crazy thing about tragedy into triumph. Um, we, we say, if you've been to our website, it says real stories, real God. I don't know about you, but I don't think it got any more real tonight than this story. It's a real story about a real person who got trapped in the real lives of the world and then found for real the real God. You know, what's so interesting to me is how the world's standards always seem to change. One minute this is in style, the next minute, no, this is in style. One, one, one year you're, 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 you're perfect if you do this, the next year, no, that's out. You don't do that anymore, it's this. And here's what I know. Do you know that you cannot embrace a real God until you yourself get real before him. You, you 
can't embrace a real God until you yourself confess with a real heart who you are. The things maybe that you valued that you shouldn't, the things that have frustrated you, even about yourself that maybe they shouldn't. If it's about being real, let's just get real tonight. And we're going to get real here, it, it, and this is going to be crazy, but, but, but we're going to get real with the band here tonight too. So here's the deal. Wherever you are, I, I, I want you, we, we, we heard a great story tonight about appearance, about what, what the world puts on appearance. Kylie, what would amaze me was when you talked about being in school, and in one minute you were too skinny and made fun of. The minute modeling became part of your life, all of a sudden all of that went away and now you were accepted. It's so amazing to me. Here, here's the deal. All of us, all of us have body image problems. So I'm going to start us off tonight and I'm just going to keep it real for everybody here. Here's the deal. The number one thing in Wendell's life that I've always struggled with is I've always struggled with weight. My whole life, even when I was in the army, I was the biggest guy around. I've always struggled with my weight. And now as I get older, I struggle with the fact that I'm bald headed. I'm a bald headed white guy. Yeah, that's me. I struggle with that appearance and that body image sometimes. Sometimes I worry about even getting in front of a camera because I really don't like to look at myself. You know, Josh, what's something in your life, if you had to pinpoint one thing that you've always struggled with when it comes to your physical appearance, what would it be? I've struggled with my weight. I've struggled with my weight and being a redhead. Being a redhead. Amy, what about you? Amy, what about you? I don't like my smile. Don't like your smile. Eric? Same. I don't like my smile. I don't like your smile. Darrell, what about you? I thought I was too skinny. Didn't look manly enough, muscular enough. Randy, what about you? Uh, definitely my weight. Derek, what about you? I was never muscular. Never muscular. I'm looking at DJ in there. He and I have talked. He said he's got a big head. Y'all don't look in there and see, all right? Um, here's the deal. Here's the deal. What a lie that the enemy can use in our lives to make us feel worthless for something that God created. God created all of us the way we are. Can't do anything about it. And from heaven, he looked down and said, you were perfect. 1 Samuel 16, 7. God says, the world looks at the outward appearance, but God doesn't value things the world values. God looks past your appearance and he looks to your heart. And so what God is looking at in your life is God is looking at you and saying, I don't care what the world thinks about you. I don't care even what you struggle with in your own image of yourself. I want you to hear from me. I love you. I made you. I created you for this time, for this moment. You can follow me and you can be free from perceptions. You can be free from voices in your life that speak to you and tell you things that, that make you feel worse. Worthless. You, you can be free from expectation. You can be free from every struggle. The choice that we have in our lives is this. Which voice are we listening to? Are we listening to him or are we listening to others or ourselves? He says, you're perfect. I want you to stand to your feet wherever you are. And I want you tonight to confess to him, God, I have struggled with this in my life. And tonight, I'm claiming triumph over the tragedy of expectations and appearance. And I find my identity in who you have made me to be as we sing. As we sing.
mission call. We want to see your glory. We're praying miracles be done. We're praying rescue stories. And Jesus, come and wake our faith and break through every doubt that we have. And we'll sing glory as walls we want to see. We want to see salvation come. We want to see your glory. thinking as we were worshiping Kylie what your life would have been if you wouldn't have had that moment of surrender how different your life would have been how different so many other lives might have been you have a moment tonight to change the history of your life forever forever a moment to find your true self in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer. And I just want to ask you, wherever you are across this land in Canada, I'm, I'm just asking you right now to bow your head and to get real with God. Maybe you want to pray this prayer. Father, I'm sorry for listening to the wrong voices. Would you speak truth to me tonight? Would you tell me who I am to you? Would you forgive me for looking for fulfillment in the wrong places? And would you come into my life and prepare a right spirit within me? Would you change the way that I look at myself? And would you help me find freedom in your name? I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of tonight's broadcast. We've got another great story. And if you didn't catch the previous story, there's still an opportunity for you to connect wherever you are, wherever you're watching, to get a hold of that story. We've got another great story and another great opportunity to learn how God changes everyday people from tragedy into triumph. Maybe you've got a story as well. Go to our website and share your story. May God bless you as you step out into a world that always says we're not good enough, but a world in which God says you're fine just the way I made you. God bless you. Thank you.